Sup, everybody. <clears throat> Welcome to another weekly adventure here on TNGG. Sitting in for my friend Chris, who who knows where the fuck he is, is Lyle. What are you talking about? I am Chris. Oh, here we go. It's so, me. In honor Chris. of the of the Lyle, the Lyle, we're gonna add. We're gonna do this. Are you naming the shovel knight after Yes, because you are today's special guest, Lyle Mixer. Right on. How's that? Is that right? Yeah. Am I good? Sweet. You spelled my name right. My. <laughs> so far, so good. I mean, I, I guess, I guess it's not a common name, but it sounds exactly like another common name. It kind of also is a little bit funny with a such a badass looking knight. It's kind of like a. Oh, there's Lyle the Knight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's that dude. I, I I don't associate my name with anything remotely cool. So, <laughs> just, <laughs> like it, it sounds like such a like. Hi there, my name's Lyle. <laughs> like it, it doesn't, and and like it's it's a name that has potential to be extremely ugly depending on like the kind of voice that says it. Oh, right. My parents... Extra nasally. But, what, Lyle! Okay, what annoys me about my name the most is my my parents claim that they put a lot of thought into it. <laughs> like, they were, like, going through names and they were thinking of, like, oh, this is how they could make fun of this, so we won't call him that. And then... so What? Well, yeah, they were like, oh, yeah, we were going to call him Daniel, but, like, that, I forget what... That rhymes what, with, like... Yeah, I forget what insult they came up with that a first grader dude, might come wanna, up with for Daniel. I want to know so what that is So then they were like, oh, yeah, let's just name him fucking ridiculous fucking bullshit <laughs> Lyle, and then, and only then, will, will he be unmockable. And it's like, idiot... First of all, kids are not that clever. So anyway, the the immediately they were like, "Ah, oh, your name is Lyle because you lie. Don't trust Lyle the liar." What? Uh, yeah. What? So first, good job, mom and dad, you morons. <laughs> Hope you're listening Second, to TNGG, <laughs> Lyle's parents. Second, um, yeah, it just sounds dumb. It do, even if you don't employ that stupid, like it doesn't sound. It's not a good name. It's an awful name. Oh, so wanted to give a shout out to. Uh, I believe Will Hernandez gave us this game. He gifted it Woo! to us through Steam. So many thanks to him. This is our very first gifted TNGG game. So we're super honored to have Mr. Will Hernandez give yeah. us this game. This game was fucking like enormous, right? Like it tapped into the very like... like yeah, uh, I mean it was big enough to where they've made two... Uh, I guess they're sequels, but they're they're more like DLCs. They're like DLC sequels. I, I think they're like proper sequels, I guess. But yeah, the, it's it was big enough to make two more games. It just feels and I, there's like a shovel knight amiibo, and so it, it did pretty well. It's it's a pretty solid game. I've played it not recently, uh -huh. so I'm probably not gonna be great at it either. But yeah, it's been a minute for me. But I remember thinking like uh, like the idea of making something look like it was like it could be on the NES is novel and great, but you gotta have a little bit, or not, it's interesting, but you have to have a little bit more than just superficial value. And this is like one of those games that actually delivered on both ends, where it's like, not only does it look like it's 1988, but it's fucking just plays really good. Yeah, the the music in this game is really good too. Uh, Jake Kaufman Vert, I think I think that's his name. Oh yeah. Jake Kaufman uh, did all the music for this. It's fucking amen. No, I... I um, I think I played this on the PS3 the first time. Yeah. You know what sucks is I played the fucking DuckTales uh, HD remastered on the PS3, and that thing did, just never worked. It just kept freezing. I'm not sure if this was the same studio that did it, but there there was an old Konami game called Sparkster, and they did, like, a Sparkster HD, and it was just not the same game at all. Sparkster? It was, yeah, it was really good, actually. It, it's... Really underrated little Konami game. Uh, if you've ever, played, are you like a little robot that shoots sparks? You're you're like a you're like a possum with a jetpack. <laughs> I'm not even joking. That's okay. a, and it's that it's sounds fucking Japanese. Cool. It's uh, if you've ever played um, Mega Man X, yeah, it plays a lot like uh, except you know, you're a possum with a jetpack. Yeah, well, you know, you know the 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 like past like X 
three, I think, you get to start playing as Zero. Okay. He has like a sword too, so he kind of plays a little bit like Zero does. I'm just games. I'm just imagining a really realistic looking possum. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, almost like Mortal Kombat style graphics. No, I mean <laughs> <laughs> like 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 it's a photograph. Yeah, they turned like, into a sprite. They green screen the possum of a, of with like possum an actual with a jet pack. <laughs> like, are we, are we getting right treasures or do you usually oh. just like blaze? Dude, let's through? fucking let's fucking give them the full experience, man. Let's go all the way. Because right, this game does have a good amount of like collectibles and people, shit. People I don't, are paying good money to I watch this, dude. I don't quite remember where they are. So I'm sure people will get mad at us for missing them. Yeah. The, the nerds are going to rage. It's just, we tend to do that with our audience. Cause yeah, <laughs> there, there's certain games, like, you never play Dark Souls, you never play Zelda. Because they all know where the heart oh, yeah. pieces are. They all know where the secret weapons are. And if you play those games, you'll just you'll just piss them off. No, I mean, but I, they'll. Th- this is the trap. They'll all tell you that they want you to play. Oh, sure. Games. They'll be like, "Oh, you sure. gotta play Dark Souls. Such a I want to watch you play Dark Souls. You're not playing I, it right. I really no, want you to play Dark right. Souls. No. And then, yeah, when you finally do play Dark Souls, it's just fucking backseat gaming for <laughs> for days. Dude, that's a good name for our channel. We should call it backseat gaming. Backseat gaming. A lot of people don't realize that when you when you do a let's play like this, especially if you're like talking a lot, uh-huh. you're not. You're, you're you're probably about like. Oh right, fifty 60, to sixty percent invested. Yeah, totally. in, into the game. Totally. So you're, yeah. you know, you're not, you're not like, it's not like you're in a fucking dark room alone, and you're like, I'm gonna give this right. my undivided attention. Right. No, you're I like, mean it's, it's. Let's make it in- interesting, and then you know maybe beat a game too. Yeah, usually the 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 talking goes better when it's a game that you kind of can sort of be on autopilot for. for yeah. Sure. Oh fuck! Am I oh, gonna make oh, the same oh. mistake? Ah, oh, you little you got dickhead. It. All right, you got, got that him. fucking. That fucking uh, fat shaming skeleton. You got that guy. He's so for <laughs> <laughs> what? It's nothing continues. He just came over and was like, oh, that <laughs> look at how thin he is. He's <laughs> so just... proud of being thin. That fucking skeleton. Yeah, a, a little, a little big to be wearing armor like that, aren't you? <laughs> Maybe we could get you a mumu. You could be a mumu knight. <laughs> oh, sorry, I cut you off. I think before I sideswiped you. I mean, fat shaming skeleton sort of tends to <laughs> derail the conversation. That's a, a, that's bit. a loaded uh, phrase. The more you think about it. <laughs> okay, yeah. what was? Did you see? There's some show I think on NBC or something about. Shit, it's called did like. I, did I fuck myself here? What? Oh, oh no, 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 there it is. I can just make that jump. Okay. No, it's some c- c- celebratory uh, fat show or something coming out. I don't know. Like it's it's weird how stuff on the internet. Like two years later, two years later becomes mainstream in what, terms of like like being proud to be fat. yeah yeah like now there's a show coming out with about all that stuff so I don't know I think I think hopefully we're we're past that point uh, like, past being proud of being fat yeah, I'd like to hope so but I don't know yeah it's I a, mean it's a fucking weird thing man. Yeah, you, you see, like, the is, is there a character that's like, check out my dad bod? <laughs> well, I, I just I just saw the cover of it. It's like this lady who's sort of like, look at me! And it's just like some text. <laughs> and that's as far as I know, but I can't imagine. Dude, I remember playing uh, Team Fortress with you, and I thought I was pretty damn good at that game. And I was like, hey, Lyle, let's just fucking whatever. Like, dude, you're fucking serious, man. Like, I'm not, you're, I'm not like, serious at all. Dude, no, you're, you're, you're kicking a lot of ass. I, I just, was like, Jesus I just have Christ, Lyle. Slippery little hands. I was, I was impressed. I have, I have schemy Shylock fingers. I likened myself to be a badass, and then here, I, <laughs> and then I had to rethink my whole life after playing Team Fortress 2. With, oh, I remember there's like a fucking dancing fish in this, right? Yeah, yeah, he's like an apple or something. <laughs> <laughs> I like I like how stoned we sound Dude, right he's now. He's like a fucking apple fish, it's man. He's like a fucking dancing fish. He's like a fucking apple or something, dude. <laughs> you know what I hate about modern video games hmm. is that they keep track of how much time you've played them that, for. That does kind of make me re- yeah, not feel great about myself. It makes me one not feel great about myself and two it makes me like super self-conscious whenever I like leave a game on by accident, <laughs> especially if it's something like shitty. Uh-huh. Like if I'm playing a shitty game, dude. I did, yeah. So and and then and then I leave it on overnight, which I so often if I'm especially if I'm like playing a game before bed, I'll just exit back to the title screen and leave it. So like nine out of right. ten games I own, so, I've done that. So with. apparently there is a time limit on Steam. I didn't know about this, but this happened to me with I bought this horrible game and I want to get a refund. But if you log in more than like an hour or two hours, 
like that's it you're you're fucked like there's nothing you can do about it so I, I forgot what game it was but yeah i left it on didn't care and i had logged in like 16 hours on it and there was just no way i could convince you know the powers that be that i wanted my money back at that point yeah mm. <laughs> that flip is fucking badass <laughs> He's got this Boba Fett look, which I absolutely love. Like, I just think it's a cool... I've, ever, since I was a kid, I always thought that sort of T, like, night face was super cool. Yeah? yeah. I, I think that there is, like... There's certain characters. I, I think maybe Boba Fett is one of them. Uh, I, Master Chief, I think, is very much one of them. And um, I think, to to a lesser extent, Deadpool kind of capitalizes on this as well. Oh, yeah. And it's it's characters that have, like, a very, like, blank, kind of, like, mundane, like, projectable face. Right. Like, Shovel Knight can look cool, but he can also look kind of ridiculous, depending right. on, you know, the context of the situation. Right. So, if you saw, like, Shovel Knight, like, get, like, smacked across the face and, like, fall down like an idiot. Right. It wouldn't, it wouldn't seem super out of character or, like, weird or jarring. Like, it wouldn't detract from the character at all. Right. But he, he also looks kind of badass. Like, he, he does look pretty cool. Like, it, it's just this kind of, like, completely neutral sort of thing with, with, it's like with armored characters or with characters that kind of have their face covered. Yeah, there's a, there's a old, uh, French film that a lot of, like, if you're in school for, for videography or for video editing, they always show like these old, most of them are garbage, but like there's one in particular that I thought was pretty good where it's like, it shows a picture of a woman's face, like just footage. And she has a sort of benign look on her and it's, and then they juxtapose certain imagery right after or before it. And depending on what happens, like it completely, you may, you completely assume it's a different emotion. It's the, it's the weirdest thing. So like, it'll be like a bunch of happy children playing and then it shows her face and she's just like, yay children, like in your head. But then it shows a bunch of death and destruction, like, and you're like, oh well, that woman's a horrible bitch for like, but it's the exact same shot, so it's it's interesting. Is how, she like, like smiling or? It's kind of just yeah, sort of like this neutral like look into the camera, but it completely changes how you see her, or like, even though she's not like emoting at all. So interesting, it's kind of that thing, yeah. But otherwise, like those are some pretty silly movies we had to watch. <laughs> They yeah, ever like tell this, you this guy is a cool enemy. Like he just kind of guards you, and then you have to like kind of, you have to catch him off guard. Yeah, I like a, I like the feeling of being in a sword fight. Like that's what I loved about Ocarina of Time, because it felt like uh, with the Z targeting, I was like, holy shit, I'm like in a fucking real, like I got a block and I got a hit with my sword. Like yeah, I feel like there's not enough games like that. I mean, Dark Souls has that for sure. Oh yeah. It, it when when you're like fighting, especially like a harder enemy, it. It really does feel like you're what, in a fucking what is it struggle. About, like, people who play that game swear by it, but I've yet to get an explanation as to, like, what in terms of gameplay or, like, design makes it pop. Like, I don't know. I hear. Well, I think, I, I do think part of it is that it's fucking ridiculously challenging. So when, when you're, like, fighting a dragon. It feels like, like you're fighting it, it a dragon. It feels, yeah, like you shouldn't be able to kill the thing, but you do. Uh -huh. I, I think that that's a big part of it. Um,. Another another big part of it is like you can kind of like if you know what you're doing in those games and you do everything in the right order, it's not that hard of a game. Like it's still difficult, but it's not as hard if you know like the level of difficulty of all the areas. Like if you've played it before and you have a formula, you can make that game pretty easy. Right. And, and it's also easier because you've done it before. But um, it, it it has like kind of this Metroid quality to it. But instead of like, oh, I need the missiles to open this door, right? It's sort of more like... I'm just more of a badass. Yeah, I you can just kind of kill your way. You can like, if you're good at the game, you can sort of like force kill your way through a lot of things early or unlock things out of order. Or It, it has a lot of like replayability. So I, I think that one of the big reasons that people swear by it so much is because it's one of those games that... You sort of learn like the back of your hand. Oh wait, can you can you bust another uh, wall? I just feel like you might be able this to. This one over here. Oh look oh, at that! Yeah, you you had it. I had an inkling. I had an inkling. But yeah, it's like it's like one of those games where I think not only is it good, but it's like the people that like it really like it and have played it a bunch of times. That's that's why it's like if you play it on the internet, you get crucified because everybody who's played it has played it like six times and knows right. all the secrets. What do you think of these helicopter mice, dude? I think. Uh... <laughs> I, I think, think I think you have to be a special kind of sick <laughs> to come up with something like this. Did you see a, a Rogue One? No, I didn't. I didn't either. 
I, I feel like <laughs> good, good, good talk. <laughs> I'm glad we figured that one out. <laughs> well, the yeah, reason, I, I mean, know. that is something to talk about, though, because how we both didn't see it. <laughs> like, I'm sure it's a, a perfectly enjoyable, fine Star Wars movie, but there's a part of me that's like, I want to save it for uh, like an Amazon video rental just because I kind of know what to expect already. And so I don't know if it's worth 20 bucks. You know what I mean? I've, I've heard like every span of opinions. Right. I'm generally a little more cynical when it comes to Star Wars. Oh, yeah. Because I'm, I'm at that really weird age where like, it, like when the prequels came out, I was a kid. So, oh, wow. Like, it, it's, it's like a really, it, it's kind of, when, when, when the prequels came out, I was like a shit kid. So I was like, these old movies, they look dumb. And then, <laughs> and then when I watched them as an adult, they had kind of been like ruined by all the fucking Family Guy parodies and stuff. Not that like they like ruined the movie, but I just felt like I had such a like familiarity with it because of all the pop culture references that it, it lost a lot of the magic. So oh, I never right. really had the magic of the original Star Wars, so I don't have, like, any oh. nostalgic attachment to them or anything. That's interesting, man. So, like, any, like, fan service stuff is just completely lost on me. Oh, I got Like, I, I understand that it is fan service, but it, it, like, it doesn't bring up any sort of, like, emotional, Con- like, okay. ooh. So The Force Awakens was just kind of, like, it... If you want my opinion, I think Harrison Ford just straight up should not have been in that movie. <laughs> like, what? Yeah, it would have so? been like, so much better without him. He was fucking. Wait, what? Do you, like, you think he was just all he did? All he did was just fucking. He was like, remember Star Wars the character? Like, all <laughs> he did, all he did was bring up the fucking old movies, like the. Oh, is there a garbage shoot? Oh, I remember when we did this ah, back in my day. Oh, fucking, wow. Like it was all. He, like he just shouldn't have been in That's it. That's such an interesting perspective. Like I did not feel the same that at thing all, with but... Carrie Fisher. God rest her soul, but she shouldn't have been in that movie. Wow, that's that's hilarious, man. No, I I got it. It's funny. Like my experience with that movie was, I walked in there being like, I don't fucking care anymore. Like fucking Star Wars is dead. The prequels are over. I'm just gonna go in there and like, just kind of like a uh, a. Uh, you know, leave the, my emotions at the door and just whatever. And then I sat there before the movie started and I had all like these fucking butterflies and knots in my stomach. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with me? Like, why do, do I care? Do I actually care as much as I'm trying to deny this? And like, I started getting nervous that it was going to be a shitty movie. And I'm like, God damn it. Like I want like, but thankfully, and I think that's why it worked for me because I was such a big fan of the original ones, um, which seems to be a common thing now between opinions about, the the force awakens because it seems like the people who shit oh bo oh. the people who were hardcore about the originals had a good time with it so yeah that being said like it crept up on me and i didn't expect it to like when fucking luke shows up at the end i was like <laughs> it's like oh be strong be strong <laughs> like it just the music swelled and like oh my god like it really brought me back to like being a you know, a pudgy a babe. 13 year old virgin. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, oh man, those are the days. <laughs> See, unlike you at 13, I wasn't a virgin. I was getting <laughs> pussy instead of watching sorry, Space Wars. Sorry, I'm not as cool as you lie. Like I'm a fucking sorry. baby. Fucking, I'm like sorry. Fuck. Forgive me. <laughs> Forgive me, Lyle. But yeah, I mean, I, I know I made a, mo- a, a fucking whole video about how, how bad Force Awakens was, but I didn't hate it. I, th- oh, yeah. I think it was like a solid, like, Six you know, or seven out of ten yeah, is what I'd give it. Like I, it, it was not like great, but and you probably have a more valid opinion than I do because I did watch it uh, uh, a second time, like in the, the theaters, and it felt long. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. I think now that I'm sort of not writing the jollies, I'm started seeing it for an actual just regular movie, and it felt a little drawn out. And some of the writing was like. I mean, honestly, like like using the Death Star thing again was like uh, yeah. I, I, I feel know. like I feel like a lot of my opinion of it, I think, will will change a little bit if it sets up like if the next one is really good and really original. My opinion of it will kind of change a little bit. Is like ah, it's a, it's the movie it had to be, you right. know. Um, it felt like an but apology, if the next if, if the anything. next one is just like Empire, then I think I'm just gonna be like, oh, this is just what they're fucking <laughs> they doing start, now. The opening shot is like snow, and you're just like, all right, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're quack quack quack. Fucking what's that thing? The tauntaun? Yeah, yeah. Uh oh. Fucking darkness. Darkness. This is kind of an obnoxious stage. Yeah, but. 
tried and true, just like obnoxious NES games. Yeah, I guess. I guess too. I like. It'd be funny extent. if they, like they had a whiteboard and they they had like list of ideals yeah, for shit, Shovel Knight. Shit that pissed us off. Right from from the NES. They had just obnoxious in all caps. Obnoxious level. Yeah. Dude, did I tell you about uh, back when I was animating at DreamWorks? I walked into a a random conference room and on the whiteboard they had like they had a thing that has it was it must have been like a, a producer meeting or something. But it had like list of things that little boys like. And it was like boogers, bugs, uh, like snakes. Like it looked like the it looked like the beginning. Oh, they had snails. It looked like the beginnings of that fucking atrocious train wreck. Uh, turbo. Turbo. Yeah. It was like the 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 brainstorming phase of that movie. Yeah. It was it was amazing. I was like, this is what these people get paid twice as much as I do to do all day to be like writing out the word booger. Yeah. And assuming, <laughs> assu- assuming that that would bring in money. You know, like it's amazing. <laughs> that's no it's fucking it was and that movie like the more you learn about it like the the director was a total it's i could be wrong but from what i what i took from it is like he was just kind of like a producer puppet who was just like convinced that he was this like oh uh like what do you call it what's that word where like writer director type like a oh i'm butchering it auteur auteur yeah like, yeah like basically like this amazing creative genius for coming up for a movie about like snails that are actually racing, as if that's such a crazily like <laughs> radical, interesting perspective on snails, because you hear interviews with that guy and you're just like, dude, fucking. I mean, to be fair, I've never seen another movie about snails racing. <laughs> He's the first guy to do it. It's just the most like, it's like not. It's it's like a wannabe Aesop's fable or something. Like I don't even know. Like it's. <laughs> turbo <laughs> yeah my my boy kyle um has this story and basically i i don't know the whole thing so i'm just gonna say it culminates in him in a boardroom with or or like i guess bearing witness to a boardroom of like business executives just staring at a powerpoint presentation and a single white slide with the word millennials written on it. <laughs> wait, sorry, wait. I, I missed the very top of this. Like this is this is uh this is where now, sorry? This is uh... Oh, he used to work at like an advertising oh, firm. Oh, oh, right, right, right. Well, dude, let me tell you. Um yeah, I do a little bit of ad work right now and like that is the stuff that starts conversations sometimes is really concerning like I just think like in terms of priority, like that's why Oftentimes, marketing misses the mar- misses it because it's like, it's kind of like the, like it is in your job description to pander. You know what I mean? And they think that that'll get the best results. So to a certain degree, it does work, depending on what like the product is. But like, it's just it's it's kind of it's very hard when you're selling like a product that nobody would want anyway. Right. Because if you're selling a product that's just like it's a good product, all you have to do is just show the thing. Dude, that's all you gotta do. Fucking like, I just imagining that like millennials just written out. Like, yeah, like <laughs> like God. it's might as well say like cancer. Or might as well have said like something like, oh my lord. The way I see it is, it's like it's it's almost like people trying to like decipher like ancient Greek texts or something like a dead <laughs> language, like like a Gaelic. Yeah. Like, <laughs> my God, I think I'm I'm think I'm technically a millennial. I'm not sure though. Like, yeah. I think I'm just barely edged in. I, I think that if if you're born in, like, the late 80s, I think you still are. Oh, okay. Um, but, yeah, yeah, I'm not I'm not sure what the, uh, what the age group is. Yeah, for a while there, it was confusing, because you had Gen X, and then you had, like, Gen Y, and that sort of phased out, and then I think Millennials. I think Millennials is, like, a whole, like, time frame. Like, I, I think Gen Z is, like, the first thing that we're not calling Millennials. Oh, okay. Well, God bless Gen Z. I hope they do a better job. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I mean, we're making the emoji movie, so that's gonna be <laughs> that's gonna be their Star Wars rod. <laughs> that's that's be... what kills me, man. It's like if you don't know any better, and you're a f- and you're a kid, you just kind of take everything at face value. And you're like, oh, this is clearly like how movies are supposed to be. Like that's just oh. That I mean, though, me though, like, is growing up in like the '80s or for me, like the early '90s, like. There's there's quite a bit of stuff that we liked that was that's fucking fair. trash. No, that's fair. That's fair. Like especially like old cartoons, 
Like right. fucking Transformers. <laughs> like, I, I know that that one's been sullied a bit by the fucking movies that are awful, but like the robots that turn into cars, dude. Michael Bay is not an <laughs> awful director for something of that concept. Like it's it it just exists to sell you toys. Right. You know, it's not high art. Right. But I mean, there's a lot of people that like, oh, I cried when Optimus Prime died in the See, Transformers that's, movie. That's <laughs> Like in the second one, dude. I I was remembering the other day. I was like, why do I have a random memory of Shia LaBeouf and Transformer Heaven? Like is that, <laughs> that happened. Is that did that yes, actually in, happen? In the second one, he dies and goes to Robot Heaven. I think the reason I was so unclear about it is because I think at that point, after two hours of just 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 barely making it through that movie, I wasn't really paying attention anymore. So I, my brain took it in, but it didn't really recognize it in when it was happening. And it sort of caught up to me later, like, oh my god, like, wait a minute, was I just there? <laughs> like, yeah, it's almost it, like a relapse. It's really like, wait, like a fucking, that, yeah. that, that was a thing that happened. Right, he was not Transformer. And a lot of people don't remember that, and it's yeah. like, how do you not remember? I brought that up with people who've seen the movie, like, what the fuck are you talking about? Which is only a testament to how bad that movie was, if you don't remember Shia LaBeouf going yeah. to Transformer Heaven. Like, what the fuck, man? I, uh, I saw an interview with, I think it was, like... <sighs> Fucking, I don't know why I was watching this. I think it was the show uh, Drawn Together, which, oh, right, by the right. way, I don't think I've ever seen a show that has such a wide range of, like, good to bad. Like, oh, it's, really? it, it has some very clever jokes and moments in it, and then yeah. it has just fucking, like, awful, like, worse than family guy. Like, how the hell did yeah. somebody write this and go, <laughs> it's funny because it's the 500th joke we right. made where the, the character's fat or the character's right. gay. right. There was, like, oh, an yeah. interview with, like, I, one of the voices, I think, and they were like, yeah, the the opposite, the, the worst thing you can have in a, a piece of media is not hate, it's, like, complete and utter indifference. Like, oh, if somebody true, hates true. something, like, they'll yeah. still remember it. Yeah. But if somebody is, like, completely indifferent to something, like, you've... You know, you've completely lost them. That's sometimes a mark of a, of a good movie. Is like I, I remember there were certain movies that really bothered me or, or got me either sad or angry as a kid, and uh, and then I come to like really appreciate them later in life because the movie did it on purpose. Yeah, like that, if, that's if, like a lot of uh, a lot of like short stories and literature do that, where it's like right. some like infuriating like dystopian like Black right. Mirror does that very well. Oh right, totally. Where like it's, you're watching you're it and you're bothered. like you're pissed off watching it you're like right. this is fucking i hate this stupid society that they're in it's so <laughs> right. annoying like that it, character it, i just oh yeah but that's t if it's intentional and it works like that's yeah. a fucking film man like it's fucking working no i i uh i think mars attacks really bothered me when i was younger uh and that's that was like me not realizing that like burton was just taking the piss out of like like i don't know like a, a an alien movie you know what i mean and just just kind of, it was kind of like his middle finger at like that sort of genre. Yeah. Just having fun with it, but it really fucking bothered me as as a kid. Or Contact, like that movie, frustrated me to death. Like I don't know if you've seen Contact. I haven't seen Contact. Oh, then I will not continue. But like, there it was more about like a certain like philosophical idea versus what happens like in the events in the movie, and that movie's fucking awesome. Like I definitely recommend watching that. But yeah, like as a kid, you 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 don't know how to process it, and then you're like, wait a minute, like that's actually really yeah. good once you digest it. Like as as a kid, there there are certain things that are like really effective as a kid that like it doesn't like because I I remember being a kid and being like, got a boner dream. Yeah, I got a boner dream, and then I was like, I'm sinning. I need to tear my penis off. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, so, long story short, I was a very productive teenager. <laughs> um, I gotta catch her. I gotta catch her. <laughs> this is such a fucking dick move. <laughs> oh, there it is. Oh, oh, shit! Got it! Take that, game. Shia. Shia. <clears throat> but, uh, what were we talking about? Talking I'm about tearing like my fucking... dick off as a teenager. Talking about Shia LaBeouf. Shia LaBeouf and Robot Heaven. Oh, about movies actually making you feel something versus right, not right. A so shit. as as a kid, you're you're like asking questions like, why does the why doesn't the good guy of the show kill the bad guy because he keeps coming back every week? And it's like, 
so there's a show you know like there's a reason why he has to keep coming back every like you don't you don't really realize the importance of things like that as a kid you don't recognize like that maybe there can be like a good villain like right appreciating villains is something that like didn't come to me until later maybe i'm weird like that but Uh i feel like a lot of kids like they don't like the villain and, it, and it's still, like, emotionally effective because it's still satisfying to see, like, the hero yeah. win. and he gets his comeuppance. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, it's it's almost, uh... Like, I, I remember, like... The, oh, look at that. Life the increase. Episodes, the episodes of TV shows where you hang out with the villains and stuff, I, I always found a little off-putting as a kid because I, I was like... I was like, but I don't like this guy. Why do I, I want to, like, see what he's doing, you know? Right. Right. Yeah, I don't know. And then eventually you get to the point where you're like, man, the bad guy's actually kind of cooler. Like, Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, um, I was going to mention too, like going back to the idea of Transformers or like robots that turn into cars, like, and the whole, with the whole, in light of the whole like turbo, like trying to find that perfect magical combination, like there is some truth to like, for whatever reason, you put the right two ingredients together and you, you've, you've struck gold. You know what I mean? Like Ninja, That's true. Ninja Turtles fucking transformers fucking like there's just something about that that i think is what those producers oh ah, shit we're trying to like unearth oh i see what in I that fucking meeting there. don't you eventually get like a fishing rod or something well who's that guy is that john stamos yeah i think he's just chap. telling you about fucking going through shit and how it's cool to be intangible <laughs> oh, i guess okay. all the pussy because oh, he's okay. so in- intangible he's like oh yeah <laughs> see that oh trick? damn all right oh damn I'm going to give this... You don't have to be here. These are kind of like challenge areas that you go to to like use your items. They're all like a stupid... There's one where you like you get an item that digs and it digs through walls. So they put you on a bunch of like walls through death... Like right over death pits and you have to like dig for your life. Like a... There you go. There you go. You got it. Like a Jew escaping... Oh, Oh, what the F? I've I've suffered enough to make that joke. What the f? I'm done. We got to the Jew Holocaust joke. Yeah, we're good. We're good. We can move on to another level. On the bloody nubs of my fingers, I dug my way out of that. Level. <laughs> oh my God, I like I like the design on this boss. Looks like a creepy, uh, like he could be in a. You ever seen R- Wizards by uh, Ralph Bakshi or that? That guy who did the like the Lord of the Rings movies back in the seventies. No, he just had a really. Well, weird... I have seen the Lord of the like the old like animated ones. Yeah, yeah, they're not great movies, but they always have like interesting, uh, like visual elements. But yeah, he did he did uh, this movie called Wizards, where it's like it's supposed to be this sort of sci fi fantasy world, and you're following like I think it's a literal wizard trying to get to the trying to, like, beat the bad guy. And there's all this, like, Nazi imagery, weirdly enough. And the guy, the filmmaker's Jewish, so he's always, like, tr- tr- using Nazis as bad guys. And at the very end, like, there's a lot of magic and a lot of, like, mystical stuff. And he finally confronts, like, the big bad guy, the the pseudo-Nazi evil guy. And he just pulls out a gun. Like, the wizard pulls out a gun and shoots him. And, like, that's how he wraps it up. Is you, that you is that he's... supposed to be, like, an emotional, like... Whoa! Like, is that supposed to catch you off guard, or is it just weird? I it was. It felt really fucking weird. Like, I started laughing because he's like, he and he calls him like a son of a bitch. And from our, from what I remember, there wasn't any sort of contemporary cussing or nothing on that like level. I don't know. It was the weirdest movie. But yeah, Wizards is a. That's like one of those weird moments where somebody is like giving you all this shit, and they're like yelling at you, and then like at the end of yelling at you, they call you dad by accident, and it's like. <laughs> Oh, oh, this is about that's, something that's else. That's what this is about. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. Man, I tell you, like, I forget who I was talking to about this, but, like, fucking animated movies from, like, this, from about the 60s to, like, the early 80s. Oh, wait, is this, is this is fucking weird stuff. Is this Plague Night? Is, is that the level we're doing? Oh, maybe. There's, there's like, a spinoff about uh, this, um, this, this character, character that we... Or oh, then I guess, the end I guess this, I'm not the only one who thought it was interesting. Yeah, I yeah. think the first, the first spinoff is about Plague Knight. So an actual game. I think it's like a full... I, I haven't played that one. I think it's like a full-length game. Oh, fuck. What the... F- I thought what I was the- well out of the spikes. You want to take it for a bit? I'll tr- oh, man, I'm still not warmed up, but I'll go for it. All right. Okay. <laughs> 
So that's how you do the down thing. I just have to prove to everybody oh my that God. I'm not that bad. <laughs> it could be worse. This is after like 50 minutes of like, all right, here we go. Yeah, I wouldn't advise going. Well, I guess you could get them on the platforms. Money's not super important. Oh, no? No. So right. it, it can't buy you happiness. All right, Lyle. You're right about that. <laughs> when you're right, you're right. Chicken's more important. Fuck off, green rat. I like how it's straight up in a platter in this game. Like, there's a lot of games where it's like, oh yeah, let's eat this trash food that I found under a fucking rock. But in this one, it, it straight up gives it like a platter and everything. Like, it knows. It's, that's like a classic video game joke. Like, oh, the guy ate the food that he found and then he throws up. Oh yeah? I think so. It's like one of those Mario takes the mushroom and then he trips out because mushrooms is broke. Oh, drug. right. It's like one of those, one of those like... Oh, okay. That video was an game, easy video fucking game joke, joke right? guy making video game jokes. <laughs> Wasn't it Zach who had like on his Twitter account? He had it like I made Mar yeah, I made Mario. Yeah, creator of Mario smokes weed. I think he had for a <laughs> right, while. Right. Yeah, I'm a gamer. Look at that. Oh fuck. Professional girl gamer. Dude, totally not a girl gamer. Is that a carrot? Yeah. Dude, I'm so like full of life. Yeah, dude. Totally just... I'm just jazzed about like existence. Fucking, uh... What's that one song in Filler on the Roof? <laughs> if I was a rich man... No, to life! Lahayim! That's what I was trying to think. Dude, I'm fucking Lahayim right now, bro. <laughs> is there is there a more Jewish movie than Fiddler on the Roof? I, uh... Probably any Woody, Woody Allen movie, maybe. <laughs> other than that. Oh, dude, the guy who directed Fiddler on the Roof is like... He's got the most ridiculous name it's like jew jewerson or something like i have to look it up now but ironically he's not jewish so i'm not sure where that name came from wait what the guy directed the guy, the guy makes a movie about an orthodox jew trying to maintain his family's tradition right and, and he's, he's like not, british that's weird yeah though i guess book of mormon they're not mormons uh, damn yeah I think they grew up around a lot of Mormons, so to speak. Yeah, that does seem to be like a like a matter that they're uh, they like they keep revisiting. Of, yeah, fascinated with. You find that a lot with a. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen like Xavier Renegade Angel or like Wonder Chosen, but there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of like really um, kind of like. Can I shoot projectiles by the way? Uh, yeah, if you press L one and R one, you you switch your items and then it oh, does sweet. different things. So the fire rod shoots like a straight. And I, I pulled up in the tank. Yeah, so. yeah. Just up, oh, that was oh, a bad yeah. idea. Jesus, fuck. What were we talking about? Uh, Jews? Talking about Fiddler on the Roof. Oh, yeah. Jews. Uh, the, guy, the guys who make Wonder Shows and, and Xavier Renegade Angel, there's a lot of, like, redneck stereotypes in those. And then you find out, like, one of the dudes is from Georgia. I don't know if both of them are from Georgia, but I know one of them's from Georgia. Huh. So it's like, if you grow up around it, maybe you have, like, a fascination with... Uh, right. Right. With, like certain types of people that you maybe you've you've always just kind of found weird or it could just be like one of those things where you don't think about it as weird until later on in oh, life and sure. then you realize holy shit that was weird once you see more of the world you're like wait a second yeah we were, we were and okay then and this. then you have this huge operating knowledge of it and you're like oh i i, I got a billion jokes i could make <laughs> with this one day i'm gonna just, make a I, joke. I have life experiences that just are jokes I'm going to make a television show about Mexican-Americans one day. It's going to be so relatable to the rest of America. Yeah. You should call it something like... Uh, Brownsville. Uh, That's the name of the city that I grew up in. I'm not even joking. It's Brownsville, Texas. <laughs> I was... Uh, I did not see the iron. I was, the, the I was joke in that. going to say you should call it Seth MacFarlane Presents Border Town. Oh, my Lord. Oh, MacFarlane. my Lord. I never got around to seeing that, but... It's every bit as bad as you oh would God. expect it to be. <laughs> I remember Zach was like, dude, just watch the first episode, and I did, and it was it was actually upsetting. <laughs> I mean it was it was exactly what it sounded like, right? Just not on not of... on like a oh it's it's offensive to me level, but on a like somebody like made this and and resources and money went into making this, like it was like it was upsetting on that level. Oh God. You see a lot of that, man. Like you telling me you're not a big Brickleberry fan? I know. See, I've heard about these things and I just avoided them. Brickleberry is another one. It's just, 
It's just upsetting. Is that a kid show though, right? No, no. It's Daniel Tosh's uh, Daniel what? Tosh's answer to Family Guy. What? That's bizarre. Man, it, you know what kind of irks me is that like a lot of Hollywood comedians think that animation is kind of no big thing, so they they kind of go into the game or the whole racket without like I think the proper sort of respect. You know what I mean? Where it's like that's true. Yeah, like it, they just think like oh animation that means I just have to sit back and make funny noises in a box and then that's it. It's like how a lot of actors go into voiceover like, eh, but to be fair, voiceover is kind of fucking it. Like the, you do have a skill set that's like oh I have to do this and I have to act with my body. So I th- I think it kind of has like the same stigma, but minus the part where it's correct. Right. Like it's a lot. E- it's a lot harder to physically act than it is to voice act. Uh, oh, I got him! Yeah, it's right, people. I'm a gamer. I've He's redeemed the, my gaming the biggest gamer identity that there's ever been. If you put all gamers' molecules on on a mass <laughs> index and spread them out, Rodrigo is the biggest one. <laughs> That's He's right. Bigger than anybody else. Thank, thank you, Lyle. Thank you. No that problem. Is, that, you can look that up on Wikipedia. It's true. <laughs> Rodrigo, the biggest person to ever play a video game. <laughs> this fucking asshole. Fuck you, dude. Go go get some fire. Oh, the fire doesn't hurt him. I can get to this boss. I'm sure here. there's a design reason why it doesn't hurt him. A lot of, a lot of the design in this game seems very like intentional. Or maybe it, maybe it's true to form to like old retro games, and like ninety percent of the good things that it does are completely oh. by accident. Yeah, you know, I, I hear that. Oh wow, I hear that about video games and movies alike, where it's like that was such a genius design move. Why did you even come up with that? And then the creator's like, I fucking I don't know. I was just thinking about this other thing, and that I didn't even notice that to be honest. Yeah, like it happens all the fucking time. Yeah, or like You're people such a that genius. Are, I'm like, well, like read too far into like symbolism and stuff like right. that, right? Or just sort of like uh, it was uh, great how you made this an allegory for the Syrian refugee crisis, <laughs> right. and it's like it Dude, wasn't. I knew a guy at school who thought Ratatouille was about Hispanic people. <laughs> he was just like, it's about the plight of the Hispanics working in the kitchen. I'm like, I, I, <laughs> I, I don't know per se if that's really what Brad Bird was going for, but but. Uh, Did he think that on like a on like a whoa it's so deep level? Yeah, or... he he was this like would be filmmaker who likened himself to be like yeah a writer creative whatever and yeah he just thought that clearly the message Speaking was being. Of, have you heard that people think that like Angry Birds is a fucking out like the the movie not the game. I can't believe I had to just say that. There's people that think that the Angry Birds movie is an allegory for the Syrian refugee crisis. Uh, And there's like Uh, half an hour videos online like deconstructing why. uh, I'm not sure if I follow that allegory per se. Did you see the Angry Birds movie? I mean, I'm because thinking... I haven't. I've only seen the videos deconstructing it as an allegory for the Syrian <laughs> refugee crisis. I mean, I can gather that maybe the birds who are angry are Syrian refugees. No, no, like it, apparently the mo- in the movie, like the pigs come over and all the birds are like, "Yeah, let's let the pigs in. They're oh, not going to cause trouble." Lord. And then the pigs cause That's trouble. That's perfect. Or like something like that. that so is... yeah, there, there's like something about like. People think that it's a, a fucking... What a place. What a place for that. The fucking Angry Birds movie. <laughs> that's the best. That, that's one of my best... That's one of my favorite interpretations. Man. My lord. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's... Oh, my God. That, like... That is the most sellout commercial movie probably ever made in existence. And people are reading yeah, it to you, like... you think maybe they, right. they slipped a little political message in right. there for the kids? Like there was like a big fight between the director and the studio heads. It's like, no, we got to, we got to, <laughs> we got to, you know, subtly hint at the crisis in, in, in Syria. <laughs> I, I almost see that as like, yeah, if, if that was like the film director, he's like, yeah, there's an important message that needs to be said. And this... This is my platform to do it. The fucking Angry Birds movie. <laughs> that would have been actually the most brilliant move ever. Now that I'm thinking about it, like maybe they, they might, like, while that might was, hold some water. While he was doing it, it, I bet he like hit it in there. If it, if it is the case, I bet the director like hit it in there, and he was like, "This is like an Iron Giant type move." You know, I'm really sticking it to the man. I'm sticking to my artistic guns by Were putting like, a fucking allegory. 
for the Syrian refugee crisis instead of the, the Angry Birds movie. <laughs> instead of the Wilhelm scream, you hear El Akbar. <laughs> <laughs> you hear you hear nine eleven. You hear a recorded phone conversation from the nine eleven plane crash <laughs> <laughs> of a person screaming before their death. <laughs> My God. That's <laughs> we gotta find that. I want somebody to make like a like a fake, you know, video like where they they find things like that. <laughs> My if hair. You look so if you look into the reflection of the red angry bird's eyes when he says this line, you can see that Osama bin Laden is reflected in his iris rather than the, <laughs> the pig. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this Play guy. Night. Hey, he looks like a little sad bird. He's like sympathetic. Yeah. I feel kind of bad for him. Well, he's like a he's like a old doctor, like a like a medieval doctor. They used to wear the bird faces, Good and that. so he too is a bird. But yeah, he's he is like a sad doctor bird. He has like a story in the the other one where I think he's got like a doctor freeze kind of thing going on, where his wife is frozen in chemicals or something. I don't remember. Oh, I don't. I don't fucking remember. I haven't actually played it, so this is all like that is sort of the back uh, of the box recollection. Oh, that is sort of the the agreed upon like most emotional uh, cartoon or episode of the Batman animated series. It was fucking Doctor Freeze's wife. Like I think that won an Emmy or something. Did it? Yeah. Interesting. I think it was, think it was amazing. Yeah. No that 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 show was fucking. I feel like a lot of people appreciate it now. I feel like back in the day, maybe not so much. But uh, on, on the flip side, like, if you do try to watch it now, and it's still good. Yeah. It's not, like, like you, you definitely do remember the best ones. Yeah, and no, for of, sure. You kind of forget when the Joker is just like, Yeah, I've got you stuck in silly putty, Batman. <laughs> right, <laughs> you right. Just, you, put, you, right. Fucking, you put all that shit out of your mind. But no, it, it is it is still good, a good show. It's just like yeah, it's not it's, as consistently good as you remember. No, I, I totally agree. Like I, I went back and, and watched some of it, and the thing I think that that uh, maybe people appreciated about it was that it wasn't trying to be anything more than what it was, and it worked on that sort of real simple level where it's like the writing was very even, like not in a bad way. Sometimes it was simple, like getting from A to B in the plot, but. Like, I feel sometimes now that's an accomplishment. Like, because you don't even see, like, plots working on a basic level on a lot of shows now. You know what I mean? So, like, not, you know, I'm making broad generalizations. But, like, I just remember thinking, like, wow, these were written in a, like, a simple but elegant way, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Nobody remembers uh, the the show after it, though, which I, I actually recall being oh, pretty uh, good. Oh, uh, Beyond? Yeah. Like, that character is just, like... I mean, I guess, I guess, because Bruce Wayne Batman, you can't, you can't stop Bruce Wayne Batman from being the quintessential Batman, obviously. Damn it! You want to give it a shot? Yeah, I'll give it a, I'll give it a go. I think you got it. But yeah, I mean, it, I, I guess that's why is because it replaces Batman. So any, any like quintessential retelling of Batman is not going to have that character in it. Right. But I, I thought, I thought that terry or whatever the fuck his name was he was cool enough I, I i don't doubt though that maybe he was like the result of like a like a marketing meeting oh where sure. they were like we need something more relatable to kids and teens they had like gen y in all caps on that whiteboard yeah exactly like he i i, I don't doubt that maybe he's supposed to be like cool teenager character because i think those were kind of popular around that time oh right so, it, it, but he he was still cool. It's like the Ben and he had 10 like thing he had like a weird. Uh, that was a little after my time. I never really saw that one. Oh, I just remember like there was a phase when everybody was turning being turned into a teenager, and it was kind of uh, it was kind of weird. I don't know. Oh, did they do that? Yeah, they did the Rugrats, where the oh, Rugrats were so all they teenagers. actually aged them up and they then, like, aged them up. Which that's what so the weird. fuck is? First of all, the the Rugrats. Finding the point of the Rugrats, yeah, yeah. there's not a lot to work with, but it's that they're babies. That's really the only like thing that the show has premise wise. Right. So you take that when away. When you take that away, what the fuck? That's like what the fuck does it have? It's like swapping out like the dinosaurs in Jurassic Park with like cows or something. Anyway, Lyle, thanks for playing, man. Uh, we will have you here in the future, and hopefully uh, Chris will be here so we can, yeah, you know, 
just <laughs> ream each other back and forth. Exactly. Make it a three way. Yeah. 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 You know how it is. Someone's gonna gonna be double fisting. Let's just. <laughs> I can promise you that. Rock out. See you guys. Bye.